Stormdog here with another Reasons to Watch. This time we'll stay English language and go back quite a few years. Red Sun is a 1971 spaghetti western film. The Japanese ambassador is traveling through the Wild West by train when gangsters hold up the train to rob a gold shipment. The ambassador is also carrying an ancient Japanese sword that he's going to give as a present to the US president. The ambassador's bodyguard will go after them with the aid of one of the gang's leaders who has just been betrayed by his pals. Toshiro Mifune The ultimate samurai? It's cool to see him in a western because so many of the themes or even outright storylines of the greatest westerns were ripped off from movies that Mifune was in usually with director Akira Kurosawa. This man alone in most circles is a selling point regardless of the rest of the cast. He was phenomenal in Seven Samurai, Yoshimbo, and its sequel Senjuro, Throne of Blood, and simply too many others to name. He rarely shows up in English language productions, making this movie a rare treat. The physicality and presence he brings to the role is worth the watch, and he's just first on the list. Mifune also entertained the cast and crew throughout the entire production with his refined culinary skills, bringing over a supply of Japanese meats, watercress, seaweed, and other ingredients. He would also exchange recipes for French and Italian dishes, including spaghetti. Charles Bronson I'm not sure I could even begin to cover the amount of fantastic movies Bronson has starred in. My first exposure to him was in The Magnificent Seven. He has appeared in many solid westerns, including Once Upon a Time in the West and Breakheart Pass. I loved him in The Great Escape, The Death Wish series, yes, all of them, The Mechanic, which is quite superior to the remake, Mr. Majestic, written by Elmore Leonard, might I add, The Dirty Dozen, and so many others. Bronson has such a strong, quiet charisma to him, and he always delivers. As the villain, we have the magnificent Alain Delon. His role in Les Samurai defined cool for a generation and greatly inspired the killer. You should also see him in Scorpio, Les Socos Rouge, and Zorro, just to name a few. Rounding out this cast of international superstars, we have Ursula Andras, the original Bond girl. Well, sort of. It is interesting to note she did appear in two of the Bond films, Dr. No and Casino Royale. You're better off skipping that second one, though. She was in the classic Clash of the Titans, as Aphrodite appropriately enough, and The Blue Max, a wonderful war movie about World War I flying aces. Terence Young It is interesting to note that the director previously directed the first two Bond movies, Dr. No and From Russia With Love. He directed the fourth Bond film, Thunderball, for Kevin McCloy, which is an interesting tale. He easily could have done many more of them, but didn't want to become a one-genre director. He wanted instead to try to do one of most every genre. Red Sun was his western. Certainly worth checking out for his excellent eye for directing action is Action of the Tiger, Tank Force, Safari, and Cold Sweat, in which he worked with Bronson as well. If you want to see him tackle more of an espionage movie, Triple Cross. If you want suspense, wait until dark. If you want crime, The Valachi Papers. If you want exploitation, The Klansman. Let me remark how much of what we see of the style of Bond was because of Young. Sean Connery was more of a working-class sort of fellow, and Young did much to build him into the suave gentleman we know him as. The style of clothes you see on screen is how Young lived his daily life. During World War II, he was a paratrooper in the British Army and took part in the Battle of Arnhem Holland, where he was wounded. Young was transferred to a Dutch hospital where he was nursed back to health. One of the volunteer nurses who took care of him was a 16-year-old Dutch girl named Audrey Hinstra, who later became known as Audrey Hepburn. More than 20 years later, he directed her and wait until dark. 
He was in a helicopter which crashed over water while filming from Russia with Love. It trapped Young below the surface for considerable time in an air bubble inside the helicopter's canopy. He was rescued, and then immediately went back behind the camera with his ominous sling. Of all the Bond films he did, he said From Russia was his favorite. He quite liked Connery in the end. He doesn't give a damn for the unsullied assets of being a star. It's not that he's ungrateful, it's just that he's concerned with personal integrity. A hell of a lot of people don't like Sean because of this. With the exception of Lassie, Sean Connery is the only person I know who's never been spoiled by success. It shouldn't really come as a surprise what my final reason is. The action in this has some quite good classic western gunfights. Mifune does not disappoint with his sword work, and it's always intriguing to see samurai versus gunfighter. I do have to comment on his knife throwing. Not that it's bad, I just find it hard to believe that the small knives he's throwing are enough to almost instantly kill a man. It was still very enjoyable to watch these artists at work in their respective crafts. It's a bit of a forgotten western, although I am sadly seeing more and more young people rarely revisiting any of the classics. It's a wonderful, strongly crafted piece with solid performances and enjoyable action. Sadly, it's not available on any streaming service. You can catch some good copies here on YouTube, last I checked. I will say these copies I've encountered have been edited for content to remove some small elements of a more mature nature. Depending on your personal preferences, this could either be a pro or a con. I've enjoyed my time here with you and hope you'll tune in again next time. Don't forget to like, please consider subscribing, but best of all would be a comment, especially if you've seen any of these movies or have a recommendation for me.